All right, let's uh, let's conjure up some more fun for ourselves right now and uh, take a, a ride over to board number three, which is tamales, uh, which do happen in Chicago. On the tamales board in Austria, we have Ed Sullivan coming to us from Houston, which is uh, hurricane free at the moment. In England, we have former independent presidential candidate John Anderson coming to us from Utah and sitting at 12th in the DBN rankings. In France, we have Tommy Anderson, who's... Uh, who is becoming a regular on DBN thanks to his solid play coming to us. Brandon, from... I don't think we have the the, the names listed, do we? Uh, would... Oh my God. I am sorry. Oh, thank you. There you go. Uh, I, is it too early to say I need a cup of coffee? <laughs> We're professionals here. This is fine. I was like, why is David interrupting me? That is very rude. It is rude. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you. In France, we have Tommy Anderson coming to us from Massachusetts. He is sitting at third in the DBNI rankings. In Germany, we have Ben Kelman out of Philadelphia. In Italy, we have David Leschner coming to us from Washington, D.C., my hometown. Uh, in Russia, we have Yaromir Sulia coming to us from uh, Ontario, Canada. In Turkey, we have Nick Amantangelo coming to us from Nebraska. And uh, David, I believe you were tasked with getting some background on these players. What I think Siobhan's on this one. I've got oh, the next one. This is Siobhan. All right. Uh, save that. Tell us about it, Siobhan. Uh, yeah, I got a little bit of data on all of these players. Um, so Ed Sullivan used to play on a platform that I'm unfamiliar with called Usenet about 25 years ago and came back about two years ago as a casual online player and um, really got the taste for it when he made the Nexus Finals top board in 2019. Um, it, it's cute that you're not old enough to know what Usenet is, That's <laughs> cute, by the way. <laughs> I, you know, I like to feel young from time to time. So I just you, threw you a tiny young. little. <laughs> and Ed, Ed, we should say is um, he's actually appeared with us on uh, as a broadcaster. We covered a Nexus face to face game way back, uh, way back, you know, a couple months ago. <laughs> and uh, Ed was a commentator on that. And he um, uh, he also runs a, diplom a diplomacy blog himself, along with Russ Dennis. They cover Nexus, uh, the Nexus different, uh, various Nexus events. Excuse me. I'm going to learn how to talk right now. And uh, David, is Ed going to uh, be a guest coming up? He is going to be a guest in the uh, next episode of Deadline News, which is coming up here in the, in the next week or two. Uh, he's going to be on the panel discussion, and uh, it's going to be great fun. And by the way, that game that he commentated on DBN, he and I made a bet in that game. He owes me a lot of money, that fellow. <laughs> what? So he's going to hear about that for me. All right, we'll get, we'll get the dish on that uh, during the game if we remember. Uh, all right, Siobhan, what else you got? Um, yeah, moving on to John Anderson in England. Um, he's been playing for 17 years, pretty much every format you can think of. Um, extended deadline online, face-to-face, -face, gunboat, which has become very, very popular with the um, coronavirus quarantined people these days. So... Um, he's been a very solid player throughout these DBN broadcasts. I'm really interested to see what he does tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, Tommy Anderson, big name recently, um, won Liberty. Li Liberty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all these things are blending together since I've been sent to stay home forever. Um, uh, but he's been playing for about three years, um, and plays just about everywhere. Very active in the community right now. Um, Ben Kelman, uh, played a little bit when he was a kid, but only really picked it up. Um, during the virtual face-to-face -face tournaments um, and came to us from Liberty Cup or back to us from Liberty Cup this year. Um, David, I'm a little confused by the info you sent in. You said technically you've been playing for four years, but practically for two years. <laughs> so I'm going to need to know. Um, but again, various different formats from face-to-face, -face, um, online, gunboat, etc. cetera. Um, Yaramir is very new to us new to us this year and started with virtual Dixie and Boston massacre. And this is his third tournament playing with us. Um, and then Nick um, very recently this year, um, starting in July and well, he does mention that he had one very ill conceived game of diplomacy back in high school that I'm going to guess. It sounds like he wants to forget about. <laughs> I will break in and say, John Anderson's also going to be on the next episode of deadline news on the same panel. That's right. That's right. Looking forward to finally uh, getting the truth behind the myth. Uh, you, we've speculated a lot about, uh, you know, how exactly he's managed to uh, uh, survive uh, uh, all these years and play from uh, the grave. So with that, let's uh, see how it goes. And 
Here are opening moves for spring of 1901. David, you're the uh, you're the ingenue on the broadcast. Which would you like, east or west? I guarantee it's the first time anybody's ever described me as an ingenue. So <laughs> let, let's go to the west. Let's go to the west. I almost said debutante, and then I thought, oh, it's a little <laughs> stereotyping going on. Wow. All right, so you chose the west. Um, so uh, that means you're first up. Tell us what you see. All right. Well, the German move is fairly standard. The English move with the, the Yorkshire variant of the Churchill to the north. The French support to the Burgundy, I guess, would be the move to look at there. That's, uh, you know, a safe way to make sure that you're going to have play on all three centers that you could have play on as France. Because in it, now you've got some influence on Belgium. You can still take Spain and Portugal if you want with the other two units. So a fairly strong opening for the French sort of putting your foot down and saying, I matter, and he's going to. And Siobhan, what do you got in the East? Um, the thing to note is we finally have a bounce in the Black Sea. Thank you hey, very much. But we combine hey. that with no bounce in Galicia. Um, other than that, it's a eh, bit of a yawn. Spring of 01. Everyone seems to say, oh, I'll just let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, this is where if you're Turkey, you got to you got to either uh, uh, you got to figure out a plan at this point. Right. Um, or either that, you know, either a plan for this game or, uh, for what you're going to do instead. Um, cause if they're, if they're going to work in this, this well in concert, then, um, yeah, it's going to, you got trouble. Okay. Let's see how, uh, how quickly it gets bad or whether Nick can uh, find a way to turn things around. Siobhan, what, uh, what do you see here? I smell a rat, at least for now. Um, everybody wants the Russian army in Ukraine to go to Romania. So he goes there. Now we bounce in black yet again. You know, there's a lot of talk about, do you bounce again? What do you do? But I suppose he didn't have to support himself to Romania. So why not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, everyone wants him to be in Romania. Uh, but a, a rat with uh, with the convoy and... Uh, you, don't, you I mean, still... maybe not. But why Why would Austria also support the Russian move? I it, Maybe they haven't decided yet. Maybe there's still things to be figured out. But um, yes, I see you, Chris Kelly. It's a rat. It's not an art. It's a rat. That's what we're going with here. <laughs> I would love to see a rat come out of this, to be honest, just because uh, it's, uh, yeah, it just looks counterintuitive to me. Um, all right, David, what do you see in the West? Well, the move in the West is the convoy to Belgium. We Sometimes we joke about the English uh, army going to Belgium to die. I'm a dissenter from that view. Some Most of the time, I think you send the army to England, to Belgium, so that it can do something cool in which direction you, you wouldn't go there just to go there. You go there because it's a springboard into France or it's a springboard into Germany. So we'll see what happens there. But otherwise I would say nothing shocking in the West. Well, the Russians getting into Sweden is an important fact. We'll see how much that matters going forward. And the English get Norway because the Russian, even though it had gone North does not bounce him in Norway. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's, it, it feels like a waste of the Northern opening um, because nothing came of it, not even a move to Finland to set up the taking of Norway, but just because you open North doesn't mean you have to go after England. Right. Yeah. It all depends on how you negotiated with the English. I mean, this yeah. could be the result of a, of a good deal with the English. Who knows? Yeah. And with things so copacetic for you in the South, there's not a whole lot of pressure to you know, you, you've gotten away with it, basically, if, right. if all you wanted to do is open up the possibility of something fun happening. Right. OK, uh, so builds we you know, the English, I think, are for me, the ones to look at here. Um, what is England build and also France, too. But uh, we've got two fleets from England and uh, that is hard to know. The, the one thing you do know is that uh, England is not firmly committed against France and all out attack against France. Um, with two French fleets. Uh, <laughs> so many fleets. <laughs> That's a lot of fleets. They might be committed against France now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might have wished they'd put down the fleet Liverpool. Uh, there's still Western triple uh, uh, potential here, isn't there? Sure. Yeah, if that's the if that's what they want to do with their time, they could I could give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Elsewhere, there's really little surprising. Russia didn't have a whole lot else to do. Uh, Austria didn't put down the fleet. Sad. I'm very disappointed. Uh, so, yeah, we're sorry, Ed, that you made the wise decision of not putting down a fleet. Uh, okay, let's keep pushing ahead here. And um, so, spring of 1902, and I see more black in the west. So let's start there. Doug, tell us what you see. I do see black in the West, but I actually want to first point out the holds we have in the West, mm. actually. 
because Munich hold, Holland hold, Belgium hold. Eh, not sure what the point of that is. I mean, do something uh, because now the French have gotten into Ruhr. That could easily have been prevented. And I'm not sure why you wouldn't do something other than holding in Munich and holding in Holland. I just That just puzzles me. But, but there, as you say, there's a lot of black. The English fleets are moving in position to Helgoland, North Sea, Norwegian. That's good stuff. French also moving away from the English in the sense that nobody went to the English Channel. Portugal goes to Spain, South Coast. This is really looking like the French are at least going to act like they're uh, crusading into the, in the Mediterranean. Yeah, it's, I mean, clearly Germany is the loser here. Um, yeah. And uh, you just have to wonder sort of uh, who benefits the most from it, given. I mean, what do you think? Practice point, though, for people watching this, hold should always be your last option. Mm -hmm. I, I can figure nothing else to do with my units, so I guess they'll hold. I mean, it would have been way better to self bounce in Ruhr if you didn't know what else to do. You see what I mean? I mean, this is just a good practice point, I think, for anybody watching this game. Please don't hold unless that's the only thing you've got to pull out of your pocket. There's bound to be something else in there. All right. Speaking of not holding, Siobhan, in the East, there is a lot of that. <laughs> Tell us There's a lot of movement in the East, and I'd like to settle a small debate in the comments. Um, if a rat doesn't make progress, no, that does not make it a mouse. It makes it apparently an air. <laughs> um, because Austria, Italy, and Russia seem to all be working in concert, all be going in the same direction, um, which is at once anti-Turkish and um, second, just that line, Tyrolia, Bohemia, Silesia, and soon to be Prussia. I can yeah. only imagine. Yeah. And that, did am I right here that Smyrna supported Ionian to the I Aegean? was going to ask, yes. So, oh. I, a bid to... C can I have a stab on Austria, maybe? I Turkey's trying, and we'll see. I don't know. Italy will be in Tyrolia and Ionian and Aegean, so it could happen. If he does, if if that happens, then, uh, you know, kudos to Turkey, because that would be a fantastic way to break up this AIR. Um, Absolutely. That, perhaps questionable on Italy's part. but <laughs> Yeah, I don't know that I'm taking that if I'm David in Italy, but yeah. we'll see. All right, let's find out here. Um uh, Siobhan, we'll stay with you in the East. And uh, all right. And as we said, David in Italy probably should not have taken that stab that Turkey was probably trying to convince him to do. Um, instead, yeah, the air runs strong. They make a swipe at Munich and Livonia hold. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Which... I mean, I okay, Germany's setting up to make the convoy, so maybe that's not the worst thing in the world right now. But again, just with the hold. Yeah, let's so David, uh, so clearly there's some strategic uh there's more we now have a better clear a clearer idea of the strategic uh position here. But there Germany got away with an enormous risk here. Um, tell us about it. Well, Germany goes east when there's you know, other colored units in Belgium and Ruhr and Helgoland Bight and North Sea, and none of them did anything to the Germans, uh, which is fascinating. You know, the Brit the English army going to Belgium to hold is essentially the same thing as going to Belgium to die. Please do something. <laughs> now, it could be that this is just a rearrangement. The English were going to kick, kick the Germans around, and they decided, eh, instead of the Germans have offered to sort of puppet to me or something. So let's go take Russian stuff is apparently the, the deal that has been made. And maybe this is a late breaking English, I mean, uh, uh, Western triple. I mean, maybe that's what it is. It certainly has the same effect. I mean, the French have gotten the jump on, on the Mediterranean, like you wouldn't believe. David, but do the Ionian hold? Ah. <laughs> At least go to Tyrrhenian oh, Sea, stop right? It. Stop it with the holding. Do stop it enough with the holding. <laughs> I think I think we've discovered some words that simply uh, hurt David's tongue, and uh, they are Western, they are triple, and they are hold. Well, um, I tell you what, just to, to be serious for a minute, when I first started playing the game, we actually had a phrase for this. It was called the hold and support guy. Mm. It was the guy whose way that once they got a hold of some centers, their way of playing diplomacy was to hold and support. No, diplomacy is a game of movement. All right. Speaking of movement, let's uh, let's move ourselves. And Winter, 
uh, finds us with just one adjustment, and that ends up being a fleet north coast from Russia in St. Petersburg. Um, okay, let's uh, let's see okay. how let's see how it plays out here. And um, there's uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going with where I see all the black. So Siobhan, uh, <laughs> is there are there any movement? There's there are no units that weren't successful in an attempted move. Um, so tell everything us. that wanted to move except for the fleet in Sweden got to where it wanted to go. Mm. Um, so Russia builds another Northern fleet and it does not help them whatsoever. Um, Austria walks into Venice. I'm curious to see where that's going. If that's a range, it doesn't feel like it was and Italy just kind of feels like nothing's coming up green right now. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, Russia convoys themselves across the Black Sea. Always love to see a convoy across the Black. Thank you. Um, and they're just going to try and crack the nut that is Turkey. <laughs> it's hard not to like Austria's position here, right? I love it. Because <laughs> there's just a lot of oops potential for Austria. <laughs> oops, sorry. How did I wind up here? All right, Dave, tell us about uh, the uh, the one thing that happens in, uh, in the north. Uh, well, you mean the Sweden falling as it was going to fall. No. Uh, I mean, this, this actually does smell, I smell triples. Uh, I smell triples on both sides of the board. So that's basically what it is. I actually think the Austrian move to Venice is part of the triple. Mm. Um, that, that the AIR triple, I think that's intended to either go to Tuscany or try to do some kind of goofy attack on Rome or something. So I, mm -hmm. I actually think all of that's arranged and it'll be interesting to see how long these triples last. Uh, the Germans, you know, perhaps desperately said yes to the triple as opposed to being attacked. But, you know, they're, they're, the issue is going to be what are they going to get out of it? Yeah. All right. Let's find out. And in the fall, we have uh, let's start off with you, David. Uh, tell us about. Uh, yeah. Just tell us about what you see with the Western powers. Uh, triple, 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 triple. <laughs> That's what I see. I mean, okay. the move Moving to Prussia, moving to Berlin. I mean, it's just a bunch of Tripoli stuff. Yeah. Going to going to the Barents Sea, holding in Sweden, make sure that, you know, nothing goofy happens. It's really Tripoli stuff. I mean, what's happening in the West is actually in Italy. So over to you, Siobhan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the Italian may be a part of that Eastern Triple, but they are not long for this world because no. France correctly guesses that they are going to support an attack on Rome and therefore just takes Naples out from under Italy. Italy winds up on one center at the end of this year. Um, Turkey goes down two, also going to be on one. Um, Austria and Russia, Austria mostly absolutely gets all the spoils of what's happening yeah. in the east so so we've got all right so um we're rushing headlong headlong into uh, a sort of uh, a stopped up position here three against three so the question is going to be um do they find an unstable equilibrium there to break or uh, or does it just lock up three against three well here's why it's not a lock up because ar cannot hold the mediterranean almost by definition cannot hold the Mediterranean. They just, they're never going to have the fleet strength to do it. Mm. So it is not locked up. And it's all depends on whether the Western triple stays together, but the French will eventually win in the mid if it stays together for a long period of time. So it's not really locked up in my opinion. All right. So, uh, all right. So first we'll call out the builds here. Let's get through 1904 and then, uh, then I'll give you guys a, uh, who do you like uh, uh, a question here. Uh, France puts down fleet and army. Um, yeah, France definitely feels like they're in uh, a, a good driver's seat. We get another fleet in uh, Trieste. So this is now the third game in a row that we have at least had one fleet uh, Trieste build. And uh, Italy... That was desperately needed, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Italy, interestingly, uh, chooses to keep the fleet here, I guess hoping to be useful in some way. But the problem is that Rome can't be defended. So uh, maybe they're hoping that they'll be able to get supported back into Naples or something. Um all right, and then uh, we do get an, a, an English army on the board, probably defensive in nature. Okay, uh, Siobhan, then let us hear about uh, what happens in the East. Um, I think most interestingly what happens in the East is Ionian goes to Aegean. <laughs> the Italian kept the Ionian to 
be annoying to it. Okay, we'll see what the, what's happening there. Um, as expected, the Austrian is pulling the fleet out. They're getting the Russian fleet out through Constantinople. That is going to be complicated by the Italian fleet bouncing Aegean because it depends on who they want to remain in power in Constantinople. Um, elsewhere, yeah, we've got some shifting in the middle of the board. Um, Austria takes Bohemia. Germany takes Silesia. And I think I'm now encroaching into David's territory. Oh, Davis, let it happen. Well, that's because the West is encroaching into Eastern territory. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's really exactly is. why. I mean, there's really nothing happening in the West because the triple continues. The Germans are still part of the deal. The uh, English and French have not taken their stuff yet. And I've emphasized the word yet. Um, so I, I will say this, though, before we leave this particular turn. I thought the Italian fleet was staying alive so that it would go to Greece in the fall and stay alive as an Eastern fleet to help hold the med. That was what I thought was happening. But with, get, given the moves, that apparently is not what's happening. That's a real missed opportunity. Really, the Austrians don't need Greece. They should get rid of that army, give that to the Italians so that they've got another fleet to help hold the med with. That's what I thought was happening. And I sure hope that is what's happening in the fall term, but it doesn't look like it based on these moves. Yeah. Well, they should be able to at least keep France out of the Mediterranean this turn. Uh, then the question at uh, the Ionian this turn, the question is then can they get um, can they get another fleet into play before um, before France? I think they can actually because um, I mean, yeah. the, the Italian should have convoyed Greece to Apulia. Oh, yeah. And then and then taken Greece behind it is what should have happened. But I mean, it's woulda, shoulda, coulda. OK, uh, Siobhan, we've got, a, I think, what looks like a. <sighs> A, a terrible misorder here on Austria's part. Uh, tell us about this. Um. Okay. Let me just. Yeah. So France gets into the Ionian because um, wait, Austria show uses me those moves. Sure, Austria used Adriatic to support Venice completely unnecessarily. Venice only had uh, okay. an attack of potentially oh that's, one. That's a huge, huge mistake. Yeah. yeah. And but Aegean did not support Ionian? Is that? Aegean, um, Aegean tried to support Ionian, but Ionian moved to Tunis. Ionian moved. Thank you. That's what I was missing. Yeah, no, there's, okay. there's really only one set of moves here. Aegean to the Ionian with support from Adriatic. Um, mm -hmm. And Bulgaria should be heading back over to the front line here. This yeah, is... Bulgaria pulling back to protect Khan. It, this AR is breaking down but i mean you know this is the turn we see thank you very much italy and turkey for playing yeah two um, eliminations in 1904 yeah so it's it's the ar against the triple in the west and i don't think they have it all right so then uh david i'm just gonna call this out for you because not a lot happens here we have france uh moving into the western mediterranean and uh england convoys over to norway so you have the uh you have the western powers uh spreading their forces in uh opposite directions and really setting up what looks like a line um the question is going to be how stable is this um uh, like i said before so uh, russia gets a rebuild here and a pickup so they get to put down two and uh uh, France puts down another army. England puts down another army. Not clear what they're going to do with it. Um, <laughs> exactly. But it's good for defensive purposes. Holland looks beautiful this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Before we leave this, um, you know, here's the situation here. Just who, uh, who do you guys like here? Who would you want to be? And uh, David, let's start with you. Uh, England or France, either one. They're both in really good position. Because I, I'm sort of a French expert guy, I will go with France. But it, frankly, Engl English is just fine. They're they're both in good shape. Um, gosh, yeah. It, it, this is this is this is going to be tough for the Eastern powers here unless something drastically changes. Although I will point out, they could the Germans and it could have done a lot better than they did last turn. They could be in Livonia, for example. Mm -hmm. it's, it's there were some moves in there that weren't ideal, but still. They're, they're in good shape. I would certainly wouldn't pick the Austrians or the Russians at this point. Yeah. The Germans, it's just hard to see what, I mean, they're just basically the tip of the spear right now. Um, so, all right, Siobhan, what do you, uh, who would you want to be here? I mean, I want to argue with David, but yeah, you've got to be either England or France here. And even I'm not a fan of playing France and I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I think mm. I'd actually pick to step into that role. I mean, France is in the Ionian and Ruhr. I know, in like how... but they're the most vulnerable to being. I mean, 
the English could, I don't know. It's great to be in the Oni. It's great to be that far, except that that's far away from your country. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and I guess I still, I still like the position. I'm just saying it's yeah. you know you could make an argument for England's position too. Yeah, because England can slip into uh, English Channel here and yeah, and get armies in there. And so if you know, it's interesting to see what uh, what France will do with West here. But you got you got two Andersons next to each other again. I think this happened. Uh, I don't know if it was last week or the last tournament, but uh, they uh, they're both quality players. They've both proven themselves in these tournaments so far. So uh, you know, well done to them to get the commanding position. Question then becomes with tribute as they succeed, there is a lot of point incentive for them to get the jump on the other one. So question is, do they do that? Who does it? Uh, stay tuned and find out. We will come back to this game uh, in, uh, in a little while. And back to 1904. This is the board with the two Andersons. In oh, the England Anderson Alliance. France. Yep. And uh, we had just said goodbye to David Leschner in, uh, in Italy. And we still have Ed Sullivan and uh, Yarmir Sulia uh, doing a little dance in the east. Right. This is where that army and Khan, it felt uh, like a very inefficient way to manage the AR. And we wondered if there was some uh, some distrust between them. But the big story here was the Anderson Alliance and how quickly it was uh, quickly dominating this board. All right. Uh, do you guys remember who was in the east, who was in the west? Because I don't. I seem to recall I was in the East for this one and I was consistently frustrated by how it was happening. I could be wrong. So when you patch this all together, we'll find out. Hey, if, if you were in the West, we were just switching it up, man. You, you go to the East, I'll go to the West. <laughs> all right. Well, I, you know, what's going to be, what's going to get the most frustration out of Siobhan? Uh, Cause that's <sighs> delightful to see. Uh, no, no, I... We're all about making her happy. We established that earlier. Hey, in the... Yeah. David wants to make me happy. Brandon wants to frustrate me. This is going to be a great time for me here on the stream. Wait, do I have a bottle of wine? Darn it, I didn't bring it. Um, you don't have a you don't have a faucet. In the, I should just <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, you've already chosen the east. So we're going to. I'll take the that. east. Yeah. Um, and then here is the east. The moves for spring nineteen oh five. Why don't you tell us what you see? I I mean okay. Austria makes one move effectively out of everything um they take the ionian which you know good ionian's good place to be um the russians backfill into eastern mediterranean i suppose that that ar is finally trying to get somewhere they take silesia fail to take saint pete back it, it all seems I, I think this was the game where the ef just had the drop and the ar just doesn't have the fleets yeah, that's right. This is where um, Ed in Austria made the mistake of allowing uh, France into the Ionian when when could have stopped it. Uh, might yeah. have been inevitable anyway with the Puglia open, but uh, but you never know. Uh, okay, Doug, uh, Dave, sorry, I got to keep doing that. You got these D's are very hard on my idiomatic brain. Hi, Brandon. I'm David Hood. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the, the, it's not just an EF, as I recall. It's EF with germ with a sort of a German puppet. <laughs> That's right. There are some German units in yeah, there, yeah. and 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 they're not they're not trying to take out the Germans. They're using the Germans. So was, that's that's an important consideration here. You know, killing the unit in Finland's probably worth pointing out, but otherwise they're just moving in position. The French just continue to march in the south. Uh, and they're going to, because as we talked about, it's hard for the AR to have enough fleets. Even after that Austrian fleet got built, they still just don't have enough fleets. Isn't this the one where I was arguing they should have kept the Italian fleet around? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was this one. You're right. So, yeah. Right. And then we were, the question for us was who stabs first uh, ERF. And uh, in the, in the way that the, a lot of these games have gone, maybe neither of them stabs. Um, yeah. Yep. Let's and here's a quick look at the standings. John Anderson's in 15th with 20 points and Tommy Anderson had an elimination. So Tommy Anderson, there's going to be more pressure on him if he wants to make the top board to make a move here. Uh, fall 1905. Let's see what we got. And uh, a lot of a lot of action in the West there. Um, tell us about it. Oof. Yeah. Wow. Well, the, um, the, the the English actually do take Holland. And, and, uh, and Denmark. Yeah, with an army. Well, it was going to happen at some point, so I guess it shouldn't be that surprising the um, that that it happened now. The French continue to hold, uh, let the Germans hold Munich though um, against an attack from the Austrians. Um, yeah. Otherwise, English get into Saint Pete with an army, which of course is the point. Yeah. Get in there with an army. So yeah, progress. I'll 
I'll point out one extra thing here. Um, Germany could have pulled this fleet rather than retreat it, and then they would have been able to rebuild. Uh, would they? No, they would not have. I'd because they, they also lost Holland, too. So. They lost two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, tell us about the East, which has uh, also a uh, I oh, over there. Um, there. There's some fun happening. So around <laughs> the Turkish former homeland, um, the Austrians do their best to stab the Russians, but the Russians say, hey, if you're going to walk out of Khan to take one of my dots, here I am. I could have just bounced you out of Ankara. But no, this is this is a clear message of I saw that coming. Let me shift it around. So Austria does take Bull and Ankh, but loses Khan. Um, I can't imagine in any way that that was arranged. I think they were trying to stab, and it just didn't work. And this this benefits uh, England, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Actually, somebody in the chat's pointing out that the Germans could have retreated off the board and rebuilt, and that's probably because they lost the Prussia guy. But they, that would still be two down. Uh, they've lost. That would still be two Three. units off, unless they had a piff in the. They did not have a piff in the. Uh, yeah, in the that's spring. probably right. That's probably right. Yeah. That's what I was thinking first too. But the but then because they lost two. Yeah. Um, so France is going to get a rebuild here, which does is is potentially important if there's going to be an effort to to stop uh, England here. England, for their part, puts down two armies. Oh, wow! You guys like that? <sighs> Well, as opposed to what? Putting down fleets and attacking the French? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. What's your obstacle to a board top right now? The fact that the French were building? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if France isn't building, then at God, least one other fleet. Austrian fleet. Oh, see, someone heard me say that I love Austrian fleets. That was a joke. <laughs> I wonder actually if this if now these uh this little dipsy doodle was arranged. Uh, to, to build, I build the, the, the more I look at it, the more I think it must have been because now they now they outnumber uh the French fleets. Just seems like a weird way to do it. Why do the well I guess if the Russian army wants to convoy out, then it needs to be in con. Okay, I could hypothesize on this all day, but this yeah. is awesome to have that many fleets. I mean, that's that is really a great turnaround on the fleet situation. Oh yeah. And it's, I, I do love playing in Austria when building fleets becomes necessary. Um, it doesn't happen super often that you can build fleets on the regular. I mean, the French did rebuild a fleet so they can send it down there. Oh yeah. This, this is the, this is the night of the Austrian fleet. I think we've seen tons of Austrian fleet builds. True. Uh, okay. So, um, all right, let's keep pushing ahead here. Uh, right now, so just to reset the the board, we've got Austria and France both at eight, one behind England at nine. Russia is hanging on at six, and um, it's a uh, yeah. I, somebody's gonna somebody's gonna top this board. Uh, this does not feel like it's headed toward a split board top, but you never know. Spring nineteen oh six. See a bunch of movement in the uh, in the east. Let's start out with you, Siobhan, down there. Well, as I was just talking about the convoy of the army in Khan over to Greece, um, that's why they did the shifting of the armies. Um, so we're just trading some more dots, getting things into some position. Um, Austria is dropping the fleet down. I am kind of rooting for Austria now <laughs> to top this board. Um, as much as I begrudgingly took the east side of the board to talk about, I like it. I don't, but I don't. I think they're going to lose uh, Venice here. I think have a lot of units. Yeah, yeah, they can get France can get. Okay, it. well, let's yeah. see. I'd, I'm going to put my wild card horse. Okay. Or, yeah, whatever that phrase is. Does anybody else think it's interesting that the English convoyed first to Belgium instead of to Norway? <laughs> you tell. Uh, yeah, tell us about that, David. What do you mean by did. interesting? Did. You, why is uh, that interesting, David? Because what does that do against anybody except? Potentially an out of position France. I mean, arguably, you could, this would make some sense, maybe sort of, kind of. But if I'm the French, I'm thinking, wait, why didn't you convoy that to Norway? Um, yeah. So this could be interesting. Otherwise, the English just move around to you know take out more German stuff, or perhaps to defend them from the you know AR units. Who knows? All right, let's uh, let's find out. Um, it doesn't because it doesn't feel like England actually needs to stab France to to 
secure the board top, but it would, if they were able to get the jump on France, it would guarantee the board top. That feels like the situation we're in. Uh, David, uh, walk us around the, uh, the north. Hello, Irish Sea. <laughs> that's not really the, well, that's sort of the north. I'm not sure that I quite understand that one, honestly, but, but okay. Maybe because they didn't like the convoy to Belgium, but you can see that the convoy to Belgium was, was totally innocent. It was to move the guy up to Holland and then move the other Holland guy into Kiel. That's exactly what it was. Is a convoy, convoy to Belgium to ever more. innocent? <laughs> Convoys are always awesome, according to Siobhan Nolan. Uh, across the Black Sea, yes. Oh, sorry, it's only Black Sea convoys. I mean, if you got two armies, you got to convoy them somewhere. And I, I was just surprised that 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 they convoyed to Belgium. For, I think I said first. You mm -hmm. clearly were going to convoy one to Norway and one to somewhere else. I just thought it was odd that the first one was to Belgium. But at any rate, um, the as you can see, and I think I mentioned this, the English going to Baltic might have been to defend the Germans, which they did. They defended the Germans in Berlin. Because mm -hmm. they don't want anybody else to take the stuff. They want it for themselves. All right. Let's. Uh, what about the East, Siobhan? Uh, there's not a ton happening. Some bouncing around Serbia, which I'm sure was very planned, advanced the Russian fleet and the Ionian. As predicted, the Austrian does lose Venice this turn, but they're still my dark horse. All right. Um, shall we uh, say hello to Fleet Liverpool? Indeed we do. <laughs> and Fleet Brest. I, what, where's Ariel to argue for Army Liverpool? Right now? <laughs> I, so now I don't know. I mean, now I, now you see the, uh, uh, that it feels to me like England uh, either waited a turn too long or built an army too many, um, in my opinion, or both. Do you really think their position's all that bad? I'm not sure it is. No, it's more just that the size, uh, it's going to be harder to secure the board top. They're going to have to fight uh, France for it now, and it may not be as big as it would have been otherwise. Mm, maybe i mean a lot of it depends on whether ar sticks together or not in uh in fighting uh france you mean no i'm in fight in not fighting each other <laughs> right i mean it's in keep basically as a counterweight to the french yes right 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 so if they get if they fight each other and or if work out a deal with france um and france can send some more units up then uh then it gets harder for you is what you're saying uh, that's exactly what i'm saying yeah okay all right let's uh find out does any of that happen david well, the Germans go to Burgundy in the spring. That seems like a good idea for them. Uh, <laughs> then, they're going to try to live. I want right. to live. I want to live. And they will. That's a, that's a, that's, by the way, that's a Star Trek reference. I didn't expect you to get that. Um, <laughs> I grew up on Star Trek. No, I did get that. Okay, good. Good. Let's see. Uh, the uh, French tried to go to Belgium. Is that right? Uh, yes, but there was the English convoy from Norway. Norway, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, they went to the English Channel. Yeah, the German move to Burgundy is probably the thing that stands out to me. Yeah. Now, it means it means that the Germans have lost Berlin, but they were going to lose it anyway because the English weren't going to defend this anymore. Um, interesting. But it does Burgundy mean... They're vacating and going west, but that's Siobhan's territory, so let's, let's hear, hear it from Siobhan. I mean, yeah, there's not a ton of action in the East um, aside from France pulling some fleets back in the Med, which I think is going to give Austria and Russia some chance to actually make some headway where they didn't have it before. So this EF fight is, I think, going to benefit the East. Yeah, I, I'll just point out that um, it doesn't feel like Austria and Russia would lay off France here, but Austria has now has the stab opportunity, right? Oh, yeah. I, in, I can point that out as they can walk into Smyrna. They can walk into Romania. They can put they themselves in a really good position. I mean, they, they, take Munich too, at the they same. could probably take Munich, too. I mean, the Greece army presents a little bit of an irritation. But if you're convincing the Russian to convoy it to Apulia or do something mm -hmm. equally yeah. silly... You could take Greece too, then. <laughs> Ex take Greece back. She'd be like, oh, no, I wouldn't. See how good we've been uh -huh. this whole time. I'm rooting for that. This is, God, this is a mess. <laughs> France. <laughs> the Lego blocks, as we've talked yeah, about. Yeah, that's yeah, so worth pointing out. France had, what, six units down here um, on the P Italian peninsula at some point? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we, uh, we got it. Tell us about the East, Siobhan. Oh, yes. Walk into Romania, walk into Smyrna, walk into Greece, convoy to Apulia, 
called it. Someone earlier in the comments said that I had a little crystal ball and a tarot deck down under the screen. Um, you're not lying. I do see the future. That happened. But big problem. What's the big problem? Uh, the big problem is... So why am I not seeing what you're talking about? Yes. <gasps> oh. Got to clear it out. Yeah. This was yeah. never, never going to work. Three dots... Trieste Nowhere to build was never going to get to Venice. I'm going to I'm going to argue with I'm going to argue with you, Brandon, because okay. I enjoy it. Uh, big problem, though, just a medium problem. Medium problem. Medium. I mean, you, yeah, you still get two builds. You, they've made a deal with the French anyway. You can see that they've made a deal yeah. with. The French. So it's, I'm, you know, whatever. I think it's, it's a medium. Good. It's a medium problem with ripple effects, though, because uh, he could have gotten a third fleet down. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure you would build a third fleet in this. And again, you've got to deal with the French. Why would you? You keep the the fleet's only moderately helpful against the Russians. You build more armies. Yeah, yeah. I suppose Russia only has one fleet, but it, I don't know. It would give you you would it would give you total control over the Southern Med. Anyway, what we could navel gaze on that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about the West? The, uh, the uh, Munich does fall, but to the French with Austrian support. It looks like. Yeah. Which again, that's my point. They made a deal, which is good for them. I like that. I like that deal. I do too. I think it's a really oh, good, really good. Absolutely. Move. Yeah, you because England is your competitor right now for the board top. So anyone who's going to fight England should be a friend of yours, except for Russia, who you need as a dot firm. Right. <laughs> yeah, Norwegian does get into the North Atlantic as as expected uh, yeah. with the bounce in London. So otherwise, I'd say nothing nothing terribly surprising. Otherwise. All right. Let's see what. Uh, uh, how many armies <laughs> Austria can fit into Vienna and Budapest? Uh, well, if you're Peter Jurgen, you can build in Serbia as Austria, according Indeed. to the top board at Worlds 2016. You can certainly try. The disbands are fun here, actually. Russia keeps two completely isolated southern units. Oh. <laughs> and gives up. This is a giant gift to Austria. Uh, Austria maybe, now. Maybe he's trying to puppet to the Austrians. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe he watched uh, what George did last week, um, getting that, uh, you know, he had the fleet that ended up in Spain. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot about that. It's a good play. I mean, Yaramir does know how to play. Uh, oh, absolutely. That. We've seen that in earlier parts of the summer in these virtual events. So maybe that's what he's thinking. It's just become some kind of puppet. The problem is Austria doesn't need that. Austria yeah. doesn't want to fight with the French. Um, yep. So we'll yep. see. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um, <laughs> it looks like Austria didn't think they needed to. Uh, to no, but look the country. Yeah, wow. Uh, tell us about it, Siobhan. Um, I do love the convoy back to Greece by the Russian. That's cute. That army will cause some irritation for the Austrian. So well done there, predicting that. Well, the fleet was going to move, and it did. But why? Why um, would why move to Aegean here? I guess to, to keep the Ionian going to the Aegean. Because that's yeah, where... it's. I think that was a guess is would the fleet okay. go to the Aegean? But in this case, the Russian decided to make the convoy instead. So, I mean, you know, it's we're at that point in the stab where you have so many guessing games. The Austrian yeah. does have a pocket build if they don't lose anything. Um, can they take Greece back? It's Not, a, it's a, well, with the French help. It's a 50 50. Uh... No, it's, it's a 50-50 guess because he has to guess where whether Ion's going to go to Albania or Aegean. Oh, okay. Right, really, right, right. Because he's going to take Sev. And he's but he's going to take Warsaw. Sev this turn. Um, and Warsaw. And Sev and Warsaw. He doesn't care if the if the Russians... Yeah. That's right. And so with the pocket build plus the extra... It, yeah. Oh, and, and plus, even if he takes Greece, it's gonna there's a retreat, a retreat somewhere. You'd have to you'd have to chase it around to keep it from retreating somewhere. Yeah, yeah don't even bother with it. You're right. Just let All it right. take. <clears throat> back here in the West, uh, I, this is straightforward, right? France is pulling back, and uh, England is advancing. Yeah. It's so is, yeah. is this just a race now between England and Austria, and and England has more looks like more room to grow? Is that is it as simple as that? Well, France made it a race by going back to the Mediterranean. I'm not sure I'd get that, honestly. Yeah. Why would you not try to defend instead? Um, maybe he was annoyed at Russia, and uh, maybe something happened in negotiation that made him think that Russia was just trying to mess with him. I guess, but it, yeah, looks, it looks more like, uh, yeah, I, it actually just looks like a big mistake. Uh, and Tommy knows better. I'm not sure. I mean, 
Marseille to Piedmont? What? No. Yeah. No. Just, no. It, it just looks like some kind of rage move or something. <laughs> So tensions were flying high. I'd like some more info about what was happening in the <laughs> negotiations here. And of course, we, as we sometimes do, and I've done it myself tonight, don't criticize Tommy. Say, way to go, John, because John is really playing this extremely well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, <sighs> this is a can, surprising. Can I, yeah, I, I'm just going to break in right here why like it, as we talked about if they walk out of greece into another one of your dots everything's fine uh -huh. you can still move a g into greece to bounce out ionian so you don't lose that as well you would have taken sev and warsaw if you had done this right yeah. and now you've got a rogue russian unit who he's going to keep like well he's gonna have to disband it does he or he'll, he'll be on two he has to disband one why, why not order to Serbia from Trieste if you're going to do this? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, I, there's so much that... And and also, you, you did the hard work to get the position in the Aegean that you wanted. Um, don't abandon it. Pull mm -hmm. Albania down here. Yeah, use Albania to cover Greece. Aegean can make a play for Eastern Med or Ionian with support from Apulia if you really want Ionian. I don't care. Do, do something else than that, but you... You cost yourself Warsaw in this case. Yeah. He was probably he was probably thinking Onion would hit Aegean, maybe, and that's why he moved Aegean. But again, I think we've all agreed, and Ed will probably agree later. This was yeah. a mistake. I, but the thing was, is like you just pull Albania to Greece without any support, or put it in Serbia if you're worried about that move. Or it, yeah. no, there's so many. I I understand there were lots of guesses here, but I don't agree with this approach. You know, I mean, let's let's also be clear that uh, these players are working under a lot of pressure. They have to negotiate. There's a you know, they only have 15 minutes to do that and develop I, the tactics. And to be fair, I actively avoid the VDL games because the idea of them stresses me out, <laughs> and I will have to get used to them at some point because apparently I have to play in this game that Brandon is organizing. Uh -huh, you don't have to, but you. He stabbed you by making you play. Like <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good I point. I stabbed Robert. myself by winning. <laughs> it, is, it is easy for us to, to be somewhat critical. But, you know, we're not doing it to be critical of Ed. We're doing it so someone can learn from it who's watching yeah. this Who's watching this this stream. Yeah, I think we're just a little also surprised, right? Because uh, we've seen Ed play before, and it seems like he's made um, uh, several mistakes here that, uh, uh, that were avoidable. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But... Uh, all right, but now it now it's just a question of how big England's board top is going to be, I believe, and uh, it looks sizable. You know, he's sitting on fifty four points right now, which would certainly guarantee him top board. Um, and he's got he's got more dots to get. Uh, so let's let's see how big he gets. He really does. I don't know why he would stop. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I'll just I'll help us out here. Uh, he convoys into Belgium rather than guaranteeing Mid Atlantic. May come to regret that since. There are now three fleets on Mid-Atlantic um, and advances in the east uh, going to Prussia in order to try to pop that. Uh, oh, but look, the support from Moscow into Warsaw. What do you guys make of that? I mean, I think if I'm England, I love that Russia is going to continue to be a thorn in the next largest power on the board side. Like, it's... We've got the army in Serbia being the problem it's going to be. It can just hang out and hold, but oops, where is it going to retreat if you kick me out? Is that more of a problem? And now I'm walking into Smyrna and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so I think if I'm England and I'm looking at the next biggest center count on the board, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm going to prop up the person who's the biggest annoyance to him. And maybe you're playing for the end of the game at this point. Um, Absolutely, I am. I mean, it doesn't prop up the Russians for very long, honestly. No, but I mean, it keeps them alive and it keeps the Austrian chasing the oh my fly gosh. out of the room instead of getting bigger. What was what was the oh my gosh for, David? V Vienna. Yeah. <laughs> oh my good. What? France is in full fu mode here, huh? I uh, again went to Tunis, tried to go to the Ionian. Interesting stuff. Tommy, if, I love this rage this play. The Kern and the Austrians did not take Serbia? No. The no, Austrians didn't take Serbia. They yeah. failed to take Warsaw, yeah. which apparently they couldn't. But Of course, you know, that Serbia guy can retreat so many places. Maybe it was yeah. just a lot of Well, and that's exactly the problem of that kicking was the them problem. out of Greece. Yeah, oh yeah. 
Yeah. Let that, them stay yeah. in Greece. And that, 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 that sealed the English board top when he made that mistake, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. I think so. We're, we're just looking uh, at final board position here. Um, and uh, this is where we're going to end up. Uh, some dots do change hands here. Austria finally takes uh, Serbia and Smyrna and uh, allows <laughs> Warsaw to get eliminated. Okay. So Russia is winds up on one in Romania. Oh, Russia has Romania. Nice. Okay. Well, no, but did they? Yeah, this is fall. Okay. So Russia winds up on one, but gives England a slightly bigger board top score. 59 points is stellar, by the way. Well, isn't it point. really good for England that Germany and Russia are still alive under this yeah. scoring system? Oh, yeah. And that, I think that's possibly half the motivation of keeping Russia on one dot is that tribute scoring. It's good for England. It's not good for Austria and France. Right. Um, well, fair. So they they would have done better to eliminate Romania. Um, also, Germany hanging out in Paris for what the last four or five game years. <laughs> I, yes, I'm sorry, Ben Kelman. We haven't talked about you for a while, but <laughs> yeah. I see you. You're there. You matter. <laughs> well done, well done, Ben. Um, okay, this is uh, this is game. Uh, did we? Yeah, this is how the game ends right here. So board number three is in the books and. Uh, does this feel like the right result to you guys based on what we were able to detect? Siobhan? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 no, it's, I agree with you, David. Yes, it feels like the right result. I feel like Austria could have done some things differently along the way. Maybe not to a board top, but to a much better result. John Anderson continues to impress, I would argue. Absolutely. So John Anderson uh, almost certainly uh, qualifies for the the top board here. He had 20 points from round one or so and uh, picks up. I mean, so uh, we're talking an 80 point total score across two rounds. If he doesn't make it to the top board, I'll be shocked. Yeah. OK, we are going to. Um, so that's two that we were pretty sure are going to make it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who fills out the rest of the the rest of these.